All right, sixth grade, we are just reviewing some things that should be pretty familiar, um, but they're essential as we get on uh, into some a little bit more uh, interesting or uh, complex area in perimeter calculations. Uh, so we're just going to review kind of the basics of uh, what these are and how to calculate them. So name, date, title, here we go. What is perimeter? Perimeter is the measurement of the distance around a figure. And so how are you going to find the distance around a figure? Well, you're just going to add up all the side lengths. So the outside side, you're just going to add them all up and say, how long would it take to uh, walk around this yard? Well, how long would it take to walk around each side? Let me add up all those. Uh, and actually, if you finding how long, that would actually be the time we're looking for the distance. So it's the distance. So the number of feet or meters or inches um, that you're walking around. So it, that next note kind of drives home that idea that it, it is measured, perimeter is measured in normal units. So kind of um, what we're used to seeing like miles or kilometers or um, millimeters, just normal, just regular measurements. Well, what is area then? Well, perimeter is just the distance around. Area is the measurement of the space and object takes up in two dimensions. So this is when we don't just have a distance to measure, but we're talking about a flat space that we're trying to cover. And we need to know how much space is this that we're trying to cover? How much space uh, is a figure or an object um, or shape, probably figure or shape, taking up? So for rectangular figures, it's calculated by multiplying base and height. Now, I know most people are used to thinking of length times width, and that's totally fine. Um, but I'm just going to start talking about base and height, because it's a little bit easier to understand, and it'll be useful when we get to those more complex figures. And it is measured in square units. So the idea is, if we're measuring a two-dimensional space, we need to use a two-dimensional measurement. So we can't just cover up a flat space inside a shape with feet, because feet just extend um, in one direction. One direction, ha, ha, ha. Um, so we need little little squares that we can cover up a flat space with. Um, so you could think like the area of your room is how many square feet, how many squares of one foot by one foot would it take to cover the floor of your room? That would tell you the area of your room. The last thing we need to know is that sides with the same number of hash marks have the same measurement. And that might not make in all the sense in the world right now, but uh, as we get into the practice problems, I'm sure it will. So sides with the same number of hash marks have the same measurement. It's a way that we don't have to write all the measurements for every side. If a lot of it's repeated, um, it makes it easier on us when we're just drawing the picture. So let's see what this all looks like when we're actually, oh, actually, first I want to talk about why is the rectangular area equal to base times height or length times width? So a lot of people memorize this formula, but I want to make sure that you never forget it because you understand why it makes sense. And then we also want to talk about and why is it measured in square units? Why do we have to use something different? Well, the idea is this. We could measure the perimeter here. Now you're seeing what I'm talking about with hash marks. The perimeter would be five feet on this side, two feet on this side another set of five feet, because these have the same number, two hash marks, and then another set of two feet. So it'd be five plus two is seven, plus five is 12, plus two is 14. And that makes sense. We can add the base and the, and the height and multiply by two. That works as well for rectangles. Um, but what about area? Why is it base times height? Well, the idea is this. I want you to think about if we actually drew um, little lines cutting this up at every single foot mark, it would look like this. We would see that we have not just a measurement of five feet, but we can mark it off into sections, five sections of one foot bases. And we use base as the horizontal. Um, and the height should make sense. It goes up and down in this case. So, so what do we have here? Well, we have the base is not just five feet, but we can start to picture it. Okay, it's five sections of one foot. And the height is, uh, it should be three feet. Ah! So the height is three feet, so it's three sections of one foot. Okay, so how does this help us? Well, we know that we're going to measure in square units. We can cover this up, not just with regular feet, but little boxes that are one foot, one of the three feet in height, and one of the five feet in base, or width, if you want to call it. And we make these little boxes, and we say, how many boxes are we going to have? Well, the height tells us we have we have groups of three feet going up and down. And how many groups of three feet are we going to have going up and down? We're going to have five sections. So that's why it makes sense to do base times height. And it also shows you why are we using square units. It's because we need to cover this with little squares. So we're not just covering it with normal feet. We're making squares out of these one foot by one foot sections. And hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Um, but let's just get on to some problems. I know this is familiar to you. Um, 
but let's get after it. This one says find the area and the perimeter. So let's do both. Let's start with the perimeter because I know a lot of people like that more. So you know that the perimeter is found by adding all the side lengths. Um, so what do we want to add first? Well, we know we have to add not just these two sides, but all four sides. So don't be confused. If they have hash marks, that's still part of the perimeter because it's still part of the distance around the figure. So if we do both sections of one and two thirds feet, we also have to add both sections of nine tenths feet. Oh. What are we going to get here? Well, if we add one and two thirds and one and two thirds, we can add, these have like denominators, so we're all good. So add the whole numbers, we get two. Add uh, the numerators, how many thirds will we have? If we put two thirds and two thirds together, we have four thirds. And then we're allowed to, because of the commutative property of addition, to add in whatever order we want if we're just adding. So nine tenths plus nine tenths is going to be 18 tenths. Now hopefully this looks a little wonky to you. Uh, we have mixed number and improper fraction, so let's rename it. This is, we can trade in three thirds to get another whole unit. We have three and one third. And then we're gonna add 18 tenths, that's the same as, well we can trade in 10 tenths and get one and eight tenths. And hopefully you see that that simplifies. So we're even gonna simplify that. We can say we can divide top and bottom by two I don't want it to be 8 tenths, but hopefully you know that that equivalent fraction, we're just renaming it as 4 fifths. Why would I do that? Well, because now we need to find a like denominator for thirds and fifths, and fifths is a little easier than tenths. So we need to find a like denominator. Let's say they both go into 15, because they do. I multiply the bottom times 5, so I'll multiply the top times 5. We'll add one whole unit plus how many fifteenths is equivalent to four fifths? Well, we multiply the bottom times three, so let's multiply the top times three. So much renaming and regrouping and reorganizing, but we have, oh, that's incorrect. Let's add our whole units first. Three and one would give us four whole units. This is weird. Four whole units and how many fifteenths? We're gonna have seventeen fifteenths. And again, we can regroup. Then good, we don't have to simplify. It'll be five. We trade in five, fifteen fifteenths. We get another whole unit, and then we just have two fifteenths left over. But what am I missing here? I'm missing the unit. We have, we know that the perimeter is five and two fifteenths. Five and two fifteenths what? Five and two fifteenths feet. And again, it's just the distance. It's just one dimensional. We're just always measuring in one direction. So uh, that's all good. What about area, though? Area, we know, is the base times the height. So this one is going to be equal to just our base, which you can say is 1 and 2 thirds feet. And I'm going to show you something cool with the algebra. Times 9 tenths feet. Hopefully you're thinking to yourself, how do I multiply fractions? And you know that we need to do top times top over bottom times bottom. And so we need to make this an improper fraction. What do we get? 1 times 3, 1 full unit gives us 3 thirds, plus 2 is 5 thirds. Then we need to multiply uh, by 9 tenths. We can simplify as we go uh, by dividing top and bottom by the same number. And we can say 10 divided by 10, 10 divided by 5, excuse me, is 2. We'll rename that, but we also have to divide this by 5, we get 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And now we can multiply top times top. 3 times 1 is 3, bottom times bottom, 1 times 2 is 2. 3 halves, but what else do we have to multiply? We can multiply feet times feet, and any number or any unit multiplied by itself can be squared. So this is another reason why it makes sense using the algebra that we have square feet or feet squared to measure this. Um, so area has using those square feet, those little squares made up of one foot by one foot. And we could use one and a half of those uh, to cover the space. Let's do another problem before I let you loose on your own. This one says find the area and perimeter of a soccer field that is rectangular, as most soccer fields are, with a length of 120 yards and a width of 75 yards. Okay, well, let's do perimeter first again. And perimeter is found by adding up all the sides. So we can know that we're going to have two bases. And we'll use a B to represent that. And two heights. 
let's fill in these numbers on our picture. So it looks like the longer the height looks like it's um, what they call the length of 120 yards. And then the width would be the 75. Excuse me. But again, the important thing to realize here is that, yeah, we only fill in two, but we automatically know the other two as well. Um, so we need to add all of them. So we need to do double the base, so that's 2 times 75. And then we're going to add double the height, which is 2 times 120. And we can do those mentally, which is great. So 2 times 75, I think you have uh, 3 quarters, and then you double that, that's 6 quarters, or 150 cents. 2 times 120, that's just 240. We can add these mentally as well, we get 390. And again, our unit is yards. This is how long it would, this is how many yards you would walk if you walked around this. Let's do area real quick. We know that area is equal to base times height. And again, like I said, you might know it as length times width, and that's fine. Um, but I, I people get confused with which is the length and which is the width, because I don't know, it's just... So I don't know, it's just weird. So I like to call this base and height because in most pictures it's going to look like a height. And like I said, it gets easier later on too. So let's just, it, we can multiply them. We're just multiplying the two numbers, two different side lengths in, in any way we want. So it's 120. And we're actually going to make this consistent. So if we said that the base is 75 earlier, let's at least say it's the same now. So the base is 75 and the height is 120. Again, it's going to be yards times yards or yards squared. We know that right away. 120. I'm going to do some work up here. I hopefully you are doing it as well. Five groups of 120 will be 600. Now we're multiplying by the tens place. So 7 times 0 is 7. 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 1 is 7. Plus 1 is 8. That's not an 11. I'm sorry. When we add these, we get 9,000. Not over 9,000, as I know some people like to say. So what we're going to get, we're going to get 9,000. But again, this is not just a normal unit like we measure one dimension in, but we need to use square yards um, or s yards squared because it's a two-dimensional shape, so we need a two-dimensional unit. So those are some examples. Um, they should be pretty familiar to you, but I ask you a question, number one, because... We're doing this on the basis of getting ready for more complex figures, but we've already done circles, so you need to know this. What measurement, so tell me the name of the measurement that we discover for circles, and what is the formula for that that tells us the perimeter of a circle? Now, we call it something different. That's why I'm asking you to name the measurement. But what's the same as the perimeter of a circle, and why does it make sense? So think of the definitions that will help you. Second part is to find the area and perimeter of this, and I gave you the top length, or the top base, I should say, is 4 and 5 tenths miles. Um, and so I only gave you one of the sides, but you should be able to figure out the rest, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow in class.